A local police chief is back from a three-day suspension he gave to himself. It's great to see you this Friday. I'm Andrea Walker. It's a controversial topic across the country that's now made its way to our area. For the first time ever, every officer in the Franklin Police Department is wearing a body camera. Another county in our viewing area is trying to make the change from dry to wet. Our Whitney Davis spent the day in Morgantown to see how the community is feeling about the possibility of being able to buy and sell alcohol. We'll get to your seven-day forecast in just a moment, but right now we have some breaking news out of Bowling Green. Kentucky State Police are currently conducting a manhunt for 30-year-old Adrian Barnes. They say Kentucky State Police say Adrian Barnes will be facing a slew of charges, but they have to find him first. Now, we'll get you under the... All right, thank you so much, Kayla. Obviously, we're having some audio issues right there, but we will get back to Stephen Harmon's interview later on tonight, so obviously stay connected to us. We're going to keep updating you on this breaking story, and the good news is no one has been hurt at this point. So. And, of course, we often talk about the victim's family in a tragic case like this one, but how did the Madden family act in court today? Good evening once again. I'm Andrea Walker with an update on your primary election results. Well, the tides seem to be turning right now in the race for the Republican nomination for governor. Earlier tonight, it looked like Matt Bevin would win that nomination, but now we're not so sure. Tonight is the second day of the 25th annual U.S. Bank Balloons, Tunes, and Barbecue Festival, where it's all about supporting a good cause and having a great time out here. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this special live edition of WBKO at 6. I'm Andrea Walker. And I'm Jake Boswell. We are standing, if you're wondering, inside an actual hot air balloon. Believe it or not, Andrea and I have enough hot air. We've been able to fill this entire <laughs> thing up. In the 60s and 70s, then 60s. <laughs> the 70s and 60s. Yeah, and 70s you get the 60s. idea. <laughs> It is Crazy not your for December. It's off to California for the Western Kentucky University Lady Toppers as Selection Monday comes to an end. Well, Shane, it is a great day to be a UK fan as the Wildcats easily beat West Virginia last night to move on to the Elite Eight. It is a historic day across the country and a hard-fought victory for the gay rights movement. Joining me now is Dora James with the Bowling Green Fairness Coalition. Now, first of all, Dora, what does this day mean for you? And what do you want to say to people? This is obviously a polarizing topic. Yeah. What do you want to say to people on the other other side of the issue that maybe don't understand what you've been fighting mm -hmm. for. Hey guys, we're in the basket of one of these hot air balloons. Now, Mother Nature decided not to really cooperate with us tonight, but there could still be the balloon glow tonight. Tell us about those plans. Thanks, Dean. You know, Kentucky is obviously a basketball state, but baseball was, is, and always will be America's pastime. And that's why we're here at the Bowling Green Ballpark to celebrate the Hot Rod's first home stand. Now, you know, Andrew, the thing about a live show is you kind of have to be able to go with the flow because our original plan was to talk about what a beautiful day it is. But yeah. It's raining now, so not so much. Tonight is the 14th annual Spirits at the Depot event sponsoring Big Brothers Big Sisters of South Central Kentucky. There's going to be live music, great food, obviously spirits, and a live auction you won't want to miss. We're going to have an inside look at the preparations for this big event coming up in just a few moments. Flora? Welcome back to AM Kentucky. I am so excited for this next segment because my little brother, little operative word. Matt Walker is here to make one of our family's favorite desserts, skillet cookie. But what I'm probably most excited about is the fact that I'm not the one that's going to be doing the cooking. Um, here's what happened last year when I attempted to cook a holiday meal for Thanksgiving. The original um, idea for this segment was for my brother to be here. But we got to follow those recipes. They are an exact science. I feel like recipes, everybody says they're an exact science. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And then you got to one of these handy things. You're going to need half a stick of butter and you're going to keep it cold. Apparently that's important. You told me that yesterday. I yes. Like, Shouldn't I be melting this? She yeah. said, well, it'll be a lot easier to mix if it's melted. Well, <laughs> you know, life isn't always easy. Ta-da! Ta-da! This beautiful, beautiful casserole here with a it's yummy It's less topping. beautiful than I hope it tastes better than it looks because, um, yeah, I think it's arguable that it's beautiful. Well, I think it's <laughs> arguable that everyone at home thinks... I will tell you that. I will never live that down. No, not really. <laughs> when it comes to mental illness, just because you can't see the pain doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's a touchy subject, so much so that people struggling often feel isolated. But the truth is, they're far from alone. Vicki Patterson had a nightmare for a childhood. I was suicidal from the time I was about 11 to 13, somewhere along in that age range, until right at 55. As a child, Vicki was molested, used in pornography, and raised in an unfit home. The abuse and neglect left her with many unanswered questions. 
I knew I was different. I knew it through elementary school. I knew it through junior high. I knew it through high school. I knew it raising my children, but I didn't know what it was. It was like a piece of a puzzle missing. It wasn't until she was 55 years old that Vicki was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, PTSD, and depression, the missing piece to her puzzle. Vicki's case, although extreme, is not uncommon. One in four Americans experiences mental illness. That's 61.5 million people suffering, often in silence. I think that if it was anything but mental illness, we'd be talking about an epidemic. One in four people you know is most families. Mom, dad, two kids. So someone in that family's life is gonna to be touched by mental illness. Mental illness is defined as a wide range of conditions that affect mood, thinking, and behavior. They may have difficulty getting out of bed, they may have uh, thought distortion, they might have a lot of anxiety about things. A smaller population um, of individuals will have more chronic uh, mental illness, and for them it could be it pr could be very significant. It could mean inability to keep a job, it could mean, um, you know, uh, family falling apart, um, or it even could mean, you know, suicide and lead to death. The following are signs that you or a loved one may want to speak to a medical or mental health professional. Excessive worrying, extreme sadness, problems concentrating, mood changes, avoiding social activities, changes in sleeping and eating habits, substance abuse, or thoughts of suicide. As you can see, suffering from a mental illness is hard enough, but overcoming the misconceptions about your disease can be even harder. We've been shamed, we've been put down so much that we blame ourselves. We are the problem. But as Dr. Bill Fole, a professor of school and clinical psychology at Western Kentucky University explains, Blaming somebody for a mental illness is a way to push them further into the problem rather than getting them to seek help. He went on to say that seeking help is often the hardest step toward recovery for two reasons, fear and ignorance. People are afraid of the unknown. Uh, they're afraid that they have something that's one, not treatable, which is not probably true, and two, that it's always lived in the culture that you don't need treatment for these, you just need to get over it. So you put those together, it's a pretty powerful message. But there is hope. The woman you met at the beginning of this story is proof that you can recover from mental illness. Vicki Patterson is now a peer specialist here at the Wellness Center of Bowling Green, where she's able to share her story in hopes of helping others. My biggest goal has been to give back. I don't want to see young people going through the mental illness and it take them to 55 years old to come out of it. Because life after mental illness... It's a freedom. You're in a prison with mental illness. Your mind is in a prison. Just as much as if I was in the jail, I meant I was in a prison. I am free. I am free to be who I'm going to be. The first step toward recovery is a simple trip to your doctor who can prescribe medication to cope with your symptoms or refer you to a specialist. Here in South Central Kentucky, we're fortunate to have a wealth of resources like life skills our local NAMI chapter, and the Wellness Connection in Bowling Green, which offers free services for those in need.